you got your Bibles, will you go to Ezekiel chapter number 14? Now, let me uh, talk to those uh, people online uh, for just a minute. Uh, you did good this morning. Uh, now, you're online and you're shut in, a lot of you, uh, but you can be a big help. Just right now, hit the share button because folks are going to need what I'm going to preach and it'll be a help to them. And we want to spread the news of the Word of God. Amen? Ezekiel chapter number 14, if you're there, say amen. I love how the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible and inspired the men to write the Bible. And um, go, actually, I've been reading through the Bible like you do, and I got to Ezekiel, and I've read this for years, and this is not the first time I read it, but it's the first time it ever jumped off the page at me. And I want you to look at Ezekiel 14 and 14, and then Ezekiel 14 and 20, and I want you to follow me in your text, then I'm going to move in a moment to another section of Scripture and preach from a thought. i got three messages, the Lord willing, from a thought out of Ezekiel 14 and 14 and verse number 20. Look with me. The Bible said, though these three men, Noah, now we're in Ezekiel, Daniel, and Job were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Look at verse 20. Special emphasis. I believe when the Holy Ghost does something like this, it's special emphasis. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Brother Ezekiel is painting a picture of the day and time that he was living. It was a day of, it was a dark day. How many of you agree with me? We're living in a dark day. Let's just be honest about it. When you can't regulate which restroom somebody goes into, we're in a dark day. When somebody don't know if they're a man or a woman, right. we living in a dark day, Amen. a sad day. We're living in a day of moral corruption. We're living in a day of political corruption. Yes, and we're even living in a day of religious corruption. And there are some apostates all around us, and we're in religious darkness. In the context of Ezekiel, God was going to see in judgment. But in the midst of this, him sending judgment, God told Ezekiel that you can live righteously even in a bleak and dark day. Amen. Amen. And he pointed out, and by the way, I believe the church still ought to be the salt of the world. I, I still believe we ought to be the light that shines in the world. Amen. Amen. And then he gives us three examples of three people in three different time eras, Brother Chad, who all three lived righteously in the day that they lived. I'll say three things about them. All lived for God in difficult times. I'm real sick of hearing, well, preacher, we just can't get it done. It's too difficult. Who told you that? I still got an all-powerful God. 
And I'll tell you what bothers me. Some of these little young whippersnappers and their little social media platform tried to down everything that we stand for. Down in soul winning. By the way, God told, sent them out two by two. Down, down in uh, invitations. We just ought not give them. And by the way, there's some Calvinistic reformed churches that don't give them. But I want y'all to know something. Be a, this old boy, as long as he's got breath, is going to invite sinners to get saved because they need saved. We're living in a dark day, a dark day when people try to correct uh, little young guys, 22, 23, 24, trying to correct people that's been doing it for 50 and 60 years. What a sad, dark day. Amen. Amen. That's good preaching, Reverend. All three of these live for God in difficult days. And also, they all three had a attribute, and that was righteousness. And they all three experienced deliverance in their circumstances. These three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, is a picture of three men in their time that lived righteously. Noah lived righteously in a Christless world. And if he lived righteously in a crisis world, we can live righteously in a crisis world. Amen. Daniel lived righteously in a compromising world. And ladies and gentlemen, this world and religion as we know it is compromising about every value we have away. But I still believe we can live righteously in a compromising world. And Job lived righteously in a chaotic world. I say this tonight on the authority of the Word of God. No matter your circumstances, no matter what you're going through, you can do right in a righteous way in this world. So with me, I'm going to preach three sermons from this passage. Amen. Sermon number one, turn to Genesis with me, to chapter six. And I want to talk tonight about living righteously in a Christless world. You got your Bibles there? Say amen. amen. Genesis chapter six. Boy, that was weak. If your Bible's there, say amen. amen. Look at the Bible. And look at verse number five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, I want to say something to these post millennials. How many of y'all know what a post millennials is? Here's what they believe. They believe everything is going to get better and that we're going to Christianize this world. I want all y'all to know, I heard a preacher say it online this last week. Chad showed it to me. This world is going to go down in defeat. We are not going to win this world. We are not going to usher in the coming of the Lord. And we are not living in the millennial kingdom. And the devil is not in a pit chained up. And if he is, he's on a long chain. Somebody help me preach tonight. I'm going to preach strong like I did this morning. Look at the passage. How many of you agree we're living there? And it, and it repented God, aggrieved God, aggrieved the Lord that he made man on the earth 
and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will deliver man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. You said, did God do wrong? He had to repent. No, God was grieved. That word repent there means grieved or sorrowful of what man had become. And how many of you agree, if God's looking down to this place right now and looking at America and looking at this world, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he doesn't judge us. But I like this Holy Ghost conjunction in verse number eight. Somebody say amen. But Noah found grace in the eyes of of the Lord. <laughs> you say, preacher, how are we going to live righteously? We're going to live righteously by the grace of God. Amen. And by the way, this is the law of first mission. First time grace is mentioned in the Bible. Somebody help me here. You ought to get excited about this. The, hey, listen, the world was so wicked. And God said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Do you remember when you were a heartbeat from falling into hell and you were in the darkest time of your life? And God's grace came and lifted you out and delivered you. Thank God for the grace of God. Oh, I'm going to preach here. I will get, some of y'all get into it about 30 minutes from now, but I hope you get into it before I get done. Amen. I want to tell you, he gives you grace to get saved by. He gives you grace to live by. He gives you grace to die by. You say, Preacher Smith, where did Noah see so much of God's grace? I'm glad you asked. Every time he looked at that boat, every moment he saw that boat, it reminded him of the grace of God. Listen to this. This is good. Could you imagine God saying to Noah, Noah, now listen, it's going to rain. And here's Noah's response. What's rain? never rained before. Noah, I want you to build a boat. He's out in the desert. What's a boat? Y'all with me? I'm going somewhere. I'm getting excited about it even if y'all's not. He said, Noah, if you get in this boat, you can escape judgment. Even though no one ever seen one. <laughs> Woo! Even though no one ever wrote in one, Noah found out that his deliverance did not originate with him. It originated with God. And God said, I got the plan for the boat. And I want you to know your salvation did not originate with you. It originated with God. And I'm going through because God is the one that planned salvation. <laughs> oh my, uh, some of these groups today think, uh, well, our faith came from this guy or that guy. You know, the, the Jehovah false witnesses, they go back to Russell. They don't like for you to say Russell, but they go back to him, not Rutherford, but Russell. 
the Mormons and Joseph Smith. But I want you to know our salvation did not originate in a man. It didn't come from Buddha. It doesn't come from Mohammed. The Pope doesn't have anything to do from it. It's all God originated, God planned, God does it. And if God does it, he does it right. Y'all with me? By the way, that's the origination. And how about the operation? There's only one ark. By the way, there's only one Savior. <laughs> and by the way, this ark that Noah was going to build was judgment proof. You say, what do you mean? Here's what he done. Here's how God told him to do this. God told him. No, you get some gopher wood. That's speaking of the humanity of Christ. I'm about to get I'm getting happy. Then, no, I want you to get some old black pitch. And I want you to go on the inside of that ark, and I want you to pitch it black. Lace it with that pitch. Then I want you to go on the outside of the ark and lace it, pitch it, thick old pitch. Mm. Well, when I've done a little study of the word pitch, it's the word kofar, where we get our word atonement. Some of you will get in this in a moment. And we then get the New Testament word, whoa, propitiation. <laughs> For he is the propitiation of our sins, and not ours only. Tell the countless, but for the sins of the whole world. I tell you what, the water couldn't get in to Noah, and Noah couldn't get out to the water. He was sealed in. He was protected in. And by the way, when I got saved, I got sealed by the Holy Ghost to the day of redemption. Y'all still with me? By the way, I, I'm just preaching. I'm almost done. I got a good 45 minutes, Bob, almost there. Put a door. He said, put a door in it. He didn't say doors. There's only one. And then I, I know something. It didn't have no dimensions on the doors. Read them. Tell me if you saw the dimension. I don't know, what the, I don't know how big it was. I just know it's big. I do know the elephants went in. And the spiders went in, and the squirrels went in the same door. Hello? And if you're going to get saved, you're going to come by the door. And you know who the door is? Jesus said, I am the door. You know who the way is? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Somebody help me preach. You want to escape Jesus? You come through Jesus. Whew. He got a divine Im invitation to come into the ark. Step out of your world. You know what God said? He said, come in. I like that. You say, well, there ain't nothing special about that. There ain't. There ain't nothing special about that. Come in, Noah. He didn't say go in. He said, come in. He said, what's that mean anyhow? That means God was in there. You know why we can live righteously? God's in our life. You know why we be victorious? Because he's in our life. <laughs> My Lord. I'm not going to preach long, but I am getting happy. Woo. And by the way, God said, and the Lord shut the door. And by the way, in Revelation, he said, I'm the one that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I want y'all to know, I know a lot of people get on us Baptists, but we are eternally secure. I am sealed in, man. I'm saved to the uttermost. 
You, they might be some of you. Y'all come from other backgrounds, maybe other church backgrounds. Look at me right now. This is not an Armenian church. This is a Baptist church that believes in eternal security, and you cannot lose your salvation for a day. And you're saved forever. So we, <laughs> I've seen the origination and the operation. Well, how about the outcome? Now, I read something, Jeff. I'm about ready to come unglued. How many's ever read the Bible? How many's been reading the Bible over 20 years? Raise your hand if you've been reading it over 20 years. I've been reading it 50. And I got something new this week. I ain't never seen it, though I've read it a hundred times. Amen? I want you to go over to the eighth chapter a minute. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done in five minutes, maybe ten. You know how it is. Let's speak a day about the outcome. I want all of you to know if you live righteously and you're saved by the grace of God, you're going to make it. Amen? Look over in the eighth chapter. And God remembered Noah. That right there ought to get every Baptist in this room shouting. How many's ever thought, well, God forsook me? I'm in trials and I don't worry that. But I want you to know once you got through what you're going to go through, I want you to know God will remember you. Woo! And every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged, and the fountains also of the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And go down to verse 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And I've done a little study of the word Ararat. I like this. I know what I'm going to say and I'm ready to shout. Ararat means exalted place. Whew. Or walking on an exalted place. Mm. Are y'all with me? And then here's what Noah done. He sent two birds out. How many knows the story? He sent a raven out, and he sent a dove out. The raven went out, and you know ravens. And the dove went out and came back. And Noah said, well, let's do this again seven days. And he sent the dove out again. And then the dove came back with an olive branch in his mouth. <laughs> oh, Lord God, I'm getting happy. Now, y'all with me? How many still with me? And then he sent the dove out again. Now, here's what the Bible said. After seven days, he sent him out again. That's a 21-day process. And this time, the dove didn't come back. And then the first thing that he done in chapter 9 was build an altar. And that, altar meant, that word means lifted up. But here's what fascinated me. We know that they came in by the door or the side of the ark. By the way, we came in through the side of Christ. And I was wondering, well, how they get out of that ark, Jeff? never seen this, Jeff. If you have, God bless you. I've never seen this. Or at least it didn't dawn on me. He took the roof off. And they went out to up. And when that dove came back with the olive leaves, he took the roof off. 
Read it. Read verse 13. Let me have this Bible. <laughs> Somebody re read it. Verse 13. And it came to pass in the sixth and hundredth and first year in the uh, first month and the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark. <laughs> And looked up and saw dry ground. I want you to know something. <laughs> that was resurrection ground. Amen. And I'll tell you what, he got out of that ark and they had a new beginning. And one of these days we're going to get out of this ark of uh, the ark and this salvation. We're going to get on another, go to another land where there's no more sickness and no more sorrow and no more uh, pain. And we're going to be on resurrection ground. Amen. And nothing but the truth. How many of y'all never seen that? Raise your hand. I ain't either. But I like it. See, I don't, he didn't have no witness but up there. And I never dawned on me they had a covering on that thing. One of these days, the grave won't be able to hold us. And we're going out and up. And we're going to be resurrected and get a new body. Amen. Like I do his glorious body. And I want you to know we need to live right. Yes. And this lost and dying world. I hope that helps you tonight. Can you imagine? Come on, man. You loved your mom, dad, didn't you? Could you sit there, man, and just think about seeing them one day. And you being resurrected, and they're coming out of the grave, and you go up together. Woo! That almost makes you shout, Lord. <laughs> and I don't know if there's anything can, but that might. Hold a minute. I ain't done. I'm just about done. Got one more thing that I haven't dealt with. Suppose what happened to the dove? What happened to him? Said that he can't, went and never came back. <laughs> I know what happened to him. I'll tell you what happened. When Jesus was out in the water. Uh, 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 uh. And he was in the water. And God in heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I well please. And the Holy Ghost came down as a dove. You said, what dove was it? It was Noah's dove, the grace dove. Somebody help me preach. Hallelujah. And by the way, I've got familiar with that dove. I'm glad that when he left, he didn't leave us comfortless. But we have him in us. I'm done. I heard a story of a boy that was flying a kite. And that kite got up in the clouds to where he couldn't see it. And this man came over, saw him with a string in his hand, but no, wasn't no kite. And the, the man looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm flying a kite. He said, well, I don't see no kite. He said, I don't either. But every time there's a little wind, I feel a tug. <laughs> And I want you to know I've never seen the Holy Ghost. I've never, I, 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 I'm not going to get into that. I know some of these idiots say they have, but I want you to know every once in a while, I feel a tug. And there's something in me, and the Holy Ghost is in me, and it's like a magnet. When the Lord says, come up hither, he's going to draw the Holy Ghost out, and i got to go up at the same time. living righteously in this old crisis world. We okay? Some of y'all ain't shouting, but I'm ready to take a lap. 
I'm flat wore out. I tell you what, if I was here and lost, you know there's just one way to be saved. It's Christ. Christ alone. One door. It's Christ. He'll be able to save you tonight if you want to be. Let's bow our head. Lois, go for me if you would. I'll get back into this next time I preach. We'll talk about Daniel. Heads bowed and eyes closed. How many Christians in this room said, Preacher, I'm going to do my best to live right, and I want you to pray for me. I want to live righteous, so just slip them up all the house. I wonder how many right now say, Preacher, I'm not saved, but I do realize what you preach. Christ is the only way for me. If you're here right now lost, would you slip up your hand? Just say, pray for me. I've never been saved, but I want to be. Just raise your hand. Had a lady this morning got saved. If you're here, hey, raise your hand if you're here and lost tonight. God bless you. Would you like to be a Christian? You can come in by the door. And God loves you. It's no game now. It's not teasing around. It's not a funny business. It's God saving you from hell. If you're here tonight and you want to be saved, you slipped up your hand. I'm going to pray for you. You come. Stand with me. Our Father, thank you for the good liberty I felt tonight. Lord, I ask you, touch sinners. God, bring them to real repentance. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you coming?